I've had a really hard time starting this video. This is like the sixth time I've tried to start this video, and so I decided to just start it like this. This video is all about things that I would change about Linux, and I've talked about this type of thing before, but I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Usually when I talk about Linux and its flaws, I usually talk about it in the scope of trying to make it easier for new users to come to Linux and use it and be happy and be productive. Those are the things that I usually try to focus on because it makes more sense and I always like to try to talk about how we can make Linux better for the new user. But today, what I'd instead like to talk about are things that I would change for myself. If I could make any changes to Linux, these are the ones that I would make. So I'm going to talk about five such things. But before I do, I want to prevail upon you, dear viewer, to go down into the comment section below after you've watched this video and tell me a few things you would change about Linux if you had ultimate power over the Linux kernel, Linux desktops, whatever. So just say you're the new head honcho at Canonical, how would you change Ubuntu? Or if you're the new maintainer of Arch, how would you change Arch? Whatever. It, you have this ultimate power, what would you do to make changes to Linux? So that's what we're going to talk about today from my point of view, and I look very much forward to what y'all have to say down there in the comments. So. The first thing I would change about Linux is that I would make the AUR standard across all distributions. There'd be no more fiffle faffle about, oh, let's use snaps, let's use flat packs, let's just use what we've always used. None of that stuff. Everyone gets the AUR. You get the AUR. You get the AUR. Everyone gets the AUR. Now, if you don't know what the AUR is, well, the AUR is the Arch user repository and it is a community-based repository filled with just oodles of software. Now, it obviously has its downsides, but I feel it is the absolute best repository in existence, bar none. So that would be the first thing I would do. Every single distribution that exists would use the AUR. The next one on the list is a little bit more controversial, and I say this knowing full well that Terminal for Life is out there watching this video and he's the biggest Bash fan in the universe and he's going to be shouting at his computer saying that I'm such a dumbass. But I think that ZSH should be the default shell. And the reason why I say this is not for any technological reason or for any really usability reason. It's just that I prefer ZSH over Bash. I don't necessarily prefer scripting in ZSH over Bash, but I do prefer in terms of actually customizing your shell, uh, the features that ZSH offers. Now, from someone who has talked many times to a Bash purist, I know that Bash is just as customizable as ZSH. There's a, just a ton of stuff there in Bash that you can do. But from an ease of use and customizability span standpoint, I think ZSH is easier to customize. Now, it's also 100% possible that the reason why I think it's easier to customize ZSH than Bash is because I've spent all of my time customizing ZSH, and I've never actually tried to customize Bash. But again, go back to the beginning of this video where I'm saying I'm making these changes for me. I don't give a damn much to the rest of y'all. So, uh, for me personally, ZSH is the way to go. Now, moving on to the next one, now that I've offended every single Bash user in existence. The next one, I think, will redeem my reputation amongst those Bash users. I think that Vim should be installed on every single distribution. The fact that it's not is just mind-blowing to me. Like, I understand <laughs> that not everybody uses Vim, but a lot of people use Vim, and you would think that Vim would be installed by default. But if you download Ubuntu, like actual Ubuntu, the most popular distribution out there and you type in vim and then the do a document or a file or something, it'll say, could not find command or whatever it is, or, and then it'll tell you to do sudo apt install vim, because vim isn't installed by default. It's the same pretty much on every distribution, uh, at least the main ones that I'm aware of. None of them ship vim by default, and I really do think that they should, simply because a lot of people use it. They ship vi by default, and hardly anyone uses vi, okay? It's just not something that most people use. Now, I mean, there's going to be somebody out there in the comments section that says, oh, I use Vi every day. Well, I mean, that's you know good for you, but most people use Vim now. And 
then there's going to be the people who say, well, you know, nano's on there. You should just use nano. And, I, and to those people, I just say, no, I'm not going to use nano. I prefer Vim. So uh, Vim would be installed on my distribution of choice by default. And I think it should be on all distributions. So moving on to the next one. <laughs> now that I've offended nano people, I'm going to move on to the next one. So I don't think that anybody is going to disagree with this one, but I'm saying that knowing that there's going to be someone in the comments that's going to disagree with me about this. Uh, I think that every single desktop environment should default to a dark theme. I don't understand in this day and age why this isn't a thing. Like, it's really weird that I've never seen a desktop environment, at least by default, ship as a dark, in a dark theme. Now, I've seen some of them do a, a mixture of light and dark, which is what Ubuntu used to do, but they've even abandoned that, and now they ship just a, a white theme, a bright theme, and you have to enable the dark theme. Now, I'm glad that dark theme now exists in most distributions, or most desktop environments, I mean, but the fact that it's not default, I don't understand, because I feel like dark mode, or dark themes, are more popular. It feels like most people are going to switch to a dark theme. Now, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe that's just me. But for at least, if I were to make the changes, if I were, if I had that ultimate power, uh, I would make sure that all of my desktop environments shipped with a dark theme by default. Now, there'd still be a light version that people could switch to if they, you know, wanted to, uh, but there'd be some penalty for using it. Like, they'd have to pay me a dollar or something. I don't know. Um, again, ultimate power goes to my head like almost instantaneously. So uh, moving on to the last one. The last one is something that I think is probably something that more people should pay attention to. And uh, I'm guilty of this as well. I think that disk encryption should be the default. So when you install Linux, the there's usually a little checkbox if you're in the Calamari's or something, or if you're using the Ubuntu installer, there's uh, a more option where you can choose LVM to encrypt your disk. But the problem is it's opt-in. It's something that you have to actively check and know what the hell you're doing in order to use. If I were in charge, if I had this ultimate power, disk encryption would be default and on for every single install. You'd have to actively turn it off in order to not encrypt your hard drive. And the reason why I say that this is something that I would change is simply because it would improve security much more than anything else we could basically do in terms of keeping our physical machines secure. And the fact that it's not enabled by default just has kind of always made me just question. Like, I understand that it's something that people would have to get used to now, but if it was always, if it had always been default, people would just be used to it by now. You'd boot up into your computer, enter your, uh, your encryption password, do it again in, in order to get into your desktop environment. It would provide that extra layer of security, and it just makes a ton of sense to me. Now, I know that as someone who doesn't encrypt their hard drives nearly as often as they should, that a lot of people just aren't used to doing it, so they don't do it at all. So that's the reason why I think it should just be de default. So those are the five things that I'd change for me on my distribution, or if I had the ultimate power to control all of Linux, those are the things that I would change. So, again, like I said at the beginning, I would love to know the things that you would change if you had this ultimate control in the comment section below. You can also let me know these things on Twitter or Mastodon. Those links will also be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons, Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, Ivan Tools, Steve A, Cyberga Linux, Garrick, Samuel, KB, TGB, Keith, Andy, Uncle Bonehead, Tri-Devil, Gary, Mitchell, J-Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Marnie, Ross, Eduardo, Art Center, Elliot, Merrick, Camp, Josh, Willie, Peter Ray, Crucible, Eric, Benny, 6, Primus, and PM. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.